Hello YouTube, again not here. It's another great day to be an American. Let freedom reign. Today I'm going to show you guys uh, some targets I recently picked up from Challenge Targets. And what I, what I got here, which I'll show you in a minute, is some steel targets. So I've really wanted to shoot steel. I don't have my own property and I don't know too many people who do. And I haven't really had the chance to shoot steel too much. But I picked up some, I picked up these steel targets from Challenge Targets uh, because I'm going to uh, a buddy's cabin for Labor Day weekend. And I know we're going to have time to do plenty of uh, shooting with handguns. And so I wanted to pick something up that would be fun and I'd get some decent use out of. So let's take a look at what's in the box. So what I ended up picking up were these uh, do-it-yourself auto reset 8-inch plate targets. And so they have springs and brackets that allow them to to uh, pop up. Here's the hardware. Here's the mounting brackets. And here is the steel plates themselves. So it gives you an idea of what the plates look like. We'll paint these up. We'll get them attached to the brackets and then I'm going to mount it to a 4x4 which is what it shows on the website. So here's a quick look at the instructions so you can kind of see what they're supposed to look like when they're assembled. It shows you what's in the package. Shows you how to go ahead and assemble them to a stake is the way they state it. Shows how you'd assemble the target plate itself. These are showing the popper targets, but I got just the basically the round plate ones, so they're slightly different looking. But same assembly process. Target plate installation. So here you can see the install for doing that, how you put the spring in. And you can either set it up with a spring or without. If you don't, obviously, each time they, you hit it, you got to reset them manually and pick them, lift them up. And here you can see uh, there is not a mounting structure included online. They do show using some cinder blocks to use to use that four x four with, or you can get brackets, or come up with some other you know, way, innovative way to get them off the ground. All right, so I showed you guys what comes in the challenge target do-it-yourself plate rack, rack box. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to uh, put this together. So I already went and cut a 4x4 and drilled some holes. Uh, I'm trying to fit this in a short enough 4x4 that I can shove it into a vehicle that I have. And so that's why I cut, I cut this down to about 62 inches. And I have, I believe, 12 inches on either end. And I think I'm spacing these about 17 and a half inches apart so that I got enough clearance between the different plates. So first of all, you take this uh, mounting bracket, and so I had to drill some holes, some 3 8 inch holes. You go ahead and attach that. I forgot, you have to put another part here. So in addition to the uh, mounting bracket, you have to put the spring adjuster in, which is what they call this piece here, with these uh, half inch wood leg screws. So we're gonna start by getting these guys started in. And then all you do is, uh, I actually put these on already, but there's some carriage bolts that just get uh, bolted onto this uh, mounting bracket that goes on the um, target plate, or they call it a hinge bracket. And then all you do is there's springs here, clevis pin. So we get that started here. So you just gotta slide it in, along with the spring, of course. So now we have it all attached. You can see when I hit that, it's going to come back up. So it's a self-resetting type thing. And so here is what it looks like from the back side. So you can see how that spring resets it. And you can put this leg in different spots here to adjust the spring tension. In the middle, it's supposed to be a slower reset. Towards the end here, it's supposed to be a faster reset. Or you can take the spring out completely. And it'll be a falling plate rack that you have to manually reset. So I was able to get out and shoot these uh, challenge steel targets over Labor Day uh, weekend to see how they held up. So we were able to put a few hours of use on them with uh, me and some friends at a friend's cabin. So we shot everything from a uh, 22 long rifle pistol, the Ruger Mark II, all the way up to uh, an AR pistol in 223. And for handguns, for other handguns, we shot uh, 9mm. So the display item there on my car, CM9, and also a Glock 19. Uh, I believe a Ruger 
something, uh, 38 special and a few 357 Magnum rounds. And I think that covers most of what we uh, put, at, put at the plates on that day. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll in some of, the, some of the video from the shooting. Did he hit it? It moves. It moves. So as you can see from the video, it was tons of fun. The targets worked very well. The auto reset feature worked well. There were some calibers where the plates didn't move very much. Uh, obviously, 22 long rifle, nine millimeters, they moved okay, and the 223 it smacked the heck out of them, as I think you can see in the video. But when you don't shoot steel very much, because I don't really have access to private land typically. Uh, and I'm, I was shooting at public ranges where they don't let you shoot steel. When you get a chance to do it, it's awesome. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, just taking a look at the targets. We'll start here for the one that had the least amount of wear. Um, or at least as far as the carriage bolts on this one were undamaged. Um, we can see a little bit of pock marks here. And again, I think most of the markings where we actually have a little crater was from the 223 or the 556 rounds. I even... I was shooting PMC 55 grain full metal jacket. I was shooting Wolf steel case, so probably not the best thing to be um, selecting there. Um, it did sit out in the rain for a couple of nights because it, you know, as it's been doing a lot of it, rained. So I have a little bit of uh, rust on the plate from where it wasn't protected, and even on the bracket where the finish got weared off from the from the splash. Here's another one of them. Uh, this one, like I said, I had a little bit of carriage bolt damage. So those are obviously easily replaced, so no big deal. Here's one of the bigger craters that I saw on the plate. Uh, a couple more smaller marks here and here and here. But I think if you were shooting with just pistol, regular caliber pistol, you wouldn't see any of that. And then the last one, this one probably had the most beat up carriage bolt <laughs> and damage but again, easily replaced. But yeah, these targets held up really well. They were tons of fun. I did notice one interesting thing is that the brackets all loosened up after shooting and I thought I had them tightened down pretty far, but I imagine the, the load from uh, the impacts definitely uh, can loosen up your bolts. And overall, these targets were a ton of fun. They're definitely worth the money and they seem to be holding up good. So I'm excited to put more rounds on them once I convince another friend to let me come over and bring my do-it-yourself plate rack and try it out. Hope you guys uh, found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe. You guys be safe out there.